Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, next up is Lisa Peterson. That's me uh, with from Parapredictor to how to swab a whole litter of puppies. Um, I'll just read you my bio in the third person. Award winning writer, journalist and podcast host Lisa Peterson is a canine subject matter expert and content strategy lead and embark veterinary. She has served as the American Kennel Club Director of Communications and Club Communications for 10 years before becoming a Westminster Kennel Club Public Relations Consultant from 2016 to 2021. Uh, Peterson began owning, breeding, and handling Norwegian elk hounds over 35 years ago. She has produced generations of champion dogs, including multiple specialty best in show winners and top award winners at national specialties in the US and Canada. She is also an AKC judge and an AKC breeder of merit. So well, let's get started. Brief outline about what we're gonna talk about today. We have prayer predictor we're gonna go over, uh, genetic health conditions, ECOI, and something new that we've added, coat colors, uh, litter packages, how to swab a whole litter. Uh, we'll go over all the different steps. And I, like I said, we have a lovely video, uh, worksheet, how to do all that, and also the activation online. I'm gonna show you some actual litter COI results. And then I'm going to show you the Embark booth, which is one of the rooms in this online platform, which is filled with resources that will be available for the next 12 months. So Parapredictor. Parapredictor has been around for several years with Embark. Um, it was available to a certain number of breeds for genetic health conditions and some ECOI. But today I'm happy to announce that um, Parapredictor is now for all breeds and all breed mixes. Um, for all health conditions, for all ECOI, and also we've added a third functionality, which are traits, and we are starting with coat colors. So basically you're getting an automated Punnett Square calculator. You can see Pair Predictor is located in your dashboard up under Breeder Tools to the far right, and you just click there to get started. So what are some of the features in Pair Predictor? Well, there's a potential for genetic health risks for puppies produced by a specific sire and dam in the dark Embark database. Um, you can also plan your litters for what the expected COI might be. As you know, due to recombination, they will vary from puppy to puppy, um, and it can deliver what's called an expected average for the litter. So not individual puppies, but the expected average for the litter. Uh, for coat color predictions, um, right now this functionality is for base coat color, which will include base patterns and also pigment color. So this is what Parapredictor looks like in your Embark for Breeders dashboard. You can see there's uh, an area for sire and dam. It will drop down and show you all the sires and all the dams that you have um, in your own account. You have to have at least one sire and one dam for Parapredictor to work. So you put those names in and then you hit calculate. Underneath, you can see that uh, genetic health conditions, expected COI will come up as well as coat predictions. On the bottom there, you can see educational resources and that's always available. So you can go there to read articles on, um, you know, anything about COI or coat color predictions, uh, et cetera, genetic health conditions um, at any time. So let's dive into the genetic health conditions. So as you see, I'm going to go through an actual litter I had three years ago of Norwegian elk hounds and show you all the different things that come up. Um, I've entered the sire. Uh, his name is Kubota. I'll call him K. And the dam is Polo. I'll call her P. So this is the K and P pairing. Um, you hit calculate, the little yellow button, and then everything will start to populate. Um, as you can see here, what shows are the breed-specific results per breed. So Norwegian elk hounds have just three. Uh, if you have a more popular breed or a breed with uh, lots of different tests available, such as Labrador Retrievers, I think we're up to 26 tests for that breed. They will all show here. They will show you the clear or carrier or at-risk results. Now, I also did a K and J pairing. Um, same sire, but a different dam. J is a, a bitch in my um, database that I know is a carrier for a PRA, um, PRCD. So I put her in there and as you can see, the pairing here does show that there is one result with some probability of carrier puppies due to what the J dam carries. And then two clear results for the other two um, conditions for Norwegian elk counts. 
And if you clear, if you look down deeper into the database here um, and on your dashboard, it'll show you that this K and J pairing, so this is the dam that has the PRA, um, it will show you that you will get 50% clear and 50% carrier puppies. And this is the same results that you would get by using a Punnett square to decide what the litter might look like. There's also resources here. It says, what does this result mean? And it shows you uh, the K sire and the J dam. And if you go down further, um, it shows you a, a considering a litter of say four puppies, it gives as an example, uh, this match will predict that 50% will be clear showing as two puppies or 50% will be carriers showing as two puppies as well. Scroll down some more in the dashboard and it shows you how to reduce, reduce genetic risk for the puppies. Um, it, it gives you lots of uh, links to videos in here to see um, and it tells you all the information you need to know. It also tells you about PRA here because that is the one carrier variant. So you can look and see what areas this is. It shows you it's part of the body, it's the eyes. It gives you the gene name. It also tells you the inheritance type. This is recessive. So let's go on to the next one, which is the coefficient of inbreeding. And the coefficient of inbreeding um, Parapredictor is going to explore how eCOI may change when matching different sires and different dams. Um, Embark does recommend testing all the puppies in the litter since actual COI will vary per individual. So again, Parapredictor gives you uh, an expected uh, litter percentage, like the whole litter, not individual puppies. Um, the impact of inbreeding should be one factor when choosing dogs to use in a breeding program. As you know, in addition to genetic health risks, there's other health tests we do when determining what pairs to breed. There's confirmation, there's temperament, there's other selection criteria, color, if that's something that's in your breed standard. Um, so all these things should be taken into consideration as well as the eCOI. I'm gonna go back to this original litter I had, which was the K and P pairing, that's Kubota and Polo. Um, the K dog, the sire, is at 19% COI, and Polo is at 13% COI. So those are the two parents, and I put those two together, and I also get the average for the breed. So the, the breed CEO, COI average is 22%. So currently, um, K and P are below the breed average. However, when we pair them together, their expected COI for the litter is 28%, which tells me that these two dogs have a lot of uh, common ancestors behind them, even though they themselves are below the breed average of 22%. So just kind of keep these numbers in mind because I'm gonna get back to this later on in the presentation. Oh. Coat colors, let's talk about coat colors for a moment. This is the newest addition to Pair Predictor. Currently, Pair Predictor does the base coat color, including base pattern and pigment for the following loci, the E, the K, the A, the B, and the D. And these results are for the sire and the dam. They're both included in these predictions, and it will show you again a percentage of a possible litter outcome. So the percentages are for the whole litter, not individual puppies. So um, my breed is very boring when it comes to coat color predictions because we are a single color breed. Um, as you can see, the sire and the dam have identical genetic results and I would expect 100% black agouti coat with black pigment and masking. Uh, these are what the results will look like. As you can see, um, it shows you each locus. It shows the dam and the sire and what their actual results are. Gives you a little explanation of it. Um, it also shows you the prediction there, again, 100%, gives you some other tips such as masking may not be visible on a solid dark coat, that's another breed. So all these things are great information to have. There's also some more links to other um, videos and articles on our website for education. But I'm gonna show you a dog that is not a single color breed. So this particular mating is a standard poodle and an F1 golden doodle. 
And as you can see, or maybe not, it's a little tiny, but um, the results between the dam and the sire are all the same, except for one of them is an AYAY and one of them is an AYAT. And as you can see here in this results, you get um, quite a bit of options here when it comes to uh, what the color might be. As you can see, 42% of the litter can have a solid black coat with black pigment and masking. 19% can have a recessive red coat with black pigment. 14% can have a solid brown coat with brown pigment. 6% can have a recessive red coat with brown pigment. And 5% can have a brown fawn sable coat with brown pigment and masking. And again, you can go to the individual results for each of these dogs if you want to look further into it. Um, at, the, at the moment, we are not doing um, certain traits such as coat length or furnishings. So these again are the base coat, colors, patterns, and pigments. So here are some pair predictor resources that I wanna just make you aware of for further information. Um, again, you must have a breeder account and embark for breeders account uh, and genetic health and traits results for at least one sire and one dam in your embark account. Uh, some of you may have a breed and health test result. You can go to customer service at breeders at embarkvet.com and ask them to convert your um, account over to a breeder result if you would like to use pair predictor. Um, you can also, if you want to compare a dog that is not in your breeding program currently, um, but you want to share another dog from another breeder in Embark, uh, you can do that either yourself by going to help.embark.vet and search for how do I add a shared owner to my dog's profile. Uh, you can do it much easier on Google. Just search for Embark Pair Predictor and that article will come up and have that link in it as well. Um, also in the Embark booth room, there's going to be a link in there that I'll talk about later. Uh, and you can also go to our blog, which is called Resource and Insights, uh, which is at embark.vec.com resources slash cat. That means category, not cat, <laughs> and dog breeders. So there's plenty of places to look about Pair Predictor, where you can find information about it and how it works. Um, also, it's good to know that you still can call customer service for help, but they will use the same pair predictor tool. And here you can do it um, by yourself anytime you want. So next, I'm going to talk about Embark for Breeder litter packages. Um, these new and improved litter packages were launched in April of this year. Um, here's, what in here's what's included in this package. Um, you can buy two different sizes. You can do the small package, which will include four to seven swabs. Um, you can buy a large one, which is eight to 11. And you can also mix and match it if you have a larger litter than 11. Within each of these kits, you're gonna get puppy brochures, which is a new addition we developed. These puppy brochures are meant to be given to the new puppy owner. It has a lot of information explaining to them the importance of DNA testing, uh, why responsible breeders use DNA testing. Um, and you can put them like in the go home kit with them to take it with them. There will be a number of brochures equal to the number of swabs that you purchase. Um, there's also a DNA health summary, which comes with your results, but in your dashboard after the results have been done. And I'll get to that in a minute, how you can use that. Here's what the brochure looks like. Um, some of our internal surveying has shown that 93% of puppy buyers surveyed prefer breeders who DNA test their puppies. So this is becoming the standard of care among puppy buyers looking to buy healthy puppies. We have an embark, about embark section. There's a diagram in here of what the DNA health summary looks like. Also, we've included a couple of QR codes for the puppy buyer, which takes them back to our website with some articles, again, explaining DNA testing to them. This is the flip side of the brochure. This is a trifold that you can put in an envelope or put in the go home bag. Um, talks about responsible breeders, again, conducting DNA testing, the DNA health summary. It also talks a little bit about proactive health care, like Amé just did in her past session. You know, if you know your dog is at risk for HUU, you can be proactive with diet and things like that. And just so you know, the Embark DNA test itself comes with breed-specific genetic health results, also physical traits. 
Um, we have breed ancestry in there as well. There's genetic diversity, which is the COI score. And also um, you can opt into research data as well. Okay, here's the DNA health summary. Um, I, I love this. It's a one page um, sort of summary of the breed specific genetic health conditions of each puppy. It's available in your dashboard. Um, it's located in the summary icon in the top menu. So just go up there and, and click on that and scroll down and you'll find something called print or download results. And you scroll down, you can see right here, it says DNA health summary. You can share with a puppy buyer. You click on this and up pops the certificate. Uh, here is an example. This is a Dallas, one of my dogs. She uh, has a puppy picture there. She's 10 years old now. Um, so this gives you a lot of great information to share with the puppy buyer. It's already populated with, as you, at activation, you can add all this stuff, um, the registered name of the dog, the date of birth, the, the puppy sex, the breed ancestry based on her DNA results, um, which like Jenna said, is different than purebred status and two different things. Um, the owner supplied breed, I put in that this was a Norwegian elk hound. I list her registration number. Also the Embark swab code is in there, which is um, important if you ever have any customer service questions. And also there's a link to the Embark profile. This is a profile you can make public through your settings uh, to share DNA results and things about your dogs with other people. So here we have great news. Um, Adele has tested clear on all three of these breed specific Norwegian elk hound uh, genetic health conditions condor dystrophy, the primary open angle glaucoma, and also progressive retinal atrophy, the PRCD. So now we're getting into the exciting part, how to swab a whole litter. What I'm gonna do is take you through the process and then I will show you the, the video and, and talk through it again. So as you get ready to swab, a whole litter, um, there's going to be some do's and don'ts here. Um, what you do want to do is separate each puppy from the mom and litter mates for one hour prior to swabbing. Uh, this is to prevent cross contamination from the mother or the puppies um, from each other. You want to make sure that your DNA sample is clear and free of anybody else's DNA. So uh, the best way to do this is don't do any nursing or food 30 minutes before swabbing, which is will be easy to do if you're going to take them out one hour prior anyways. Um, we're going to be swabbing each puppy for 30 to 60 seconds while separated. And then you have a free return mailer for each swab at the end. So we'll show you how to go through that process as well. Uh, some of the don'ts include, uh, please don't send unactivated swabs back to a park because we won't be able to process them. Uh, and unactivated swabs means you swabbed your puppy, put it in the mailer, sent it on its way, but you didn't go to the website and create a profile and activate the kit for the puppy. Uh, don't manually label the swab tubes or send notes about the litters. Um, we just scan the barcode, so none of that is necessary. And this is very important. Please don't mix up the puppy's sex or change it after activation because this will cause delays because the puppy's result will say one sex, but your profile and activation will say another and the two don't match. So that will cause a delay for us to figure out what's, what's wrong there. So here's a, a good tip about removing the dam. Uh, we wanna keep everyone happy and content and to prevent cross-contamination. Um, I would have the puppies nurse before removing the dam. That way they're fed, they're happy, they're most likely to fall asleep after they eat. Um, so they'll all be snoozing away while, um, uh, you know, they're, they're getting ready to go into their little separate areas. Um, I would also remove the dam um, when the puppies are sleeping because they're not looking for her or anything. And I would just remove the dam from her room, from the whelping box, and put her in a separate place where she can't come back and like nuzzle the puppies while you're swabbing or start sniffing around in the box, uh, and that sort of thing. So um, removing the dam is the first step here. Separating the litter. So every puppy needs a little place of their own. Um, here we have puppies that are separated out um, in each in its own separate bed. They have a warming element. That thing that looks like a big chocolate chip cookie with paw prints is actually a warming disc. 
So they're preheated and put in there so the puppies have a warming element should they need it. Um, you know, put a blanket in, in the little dog bed. If you don't have something as nice as these uh, plastic bins, um, I've also used like, you know, a, a cardboard banker's box, put a towel in it, I put a heating pad in it. So just something that they're going to be comfortable. They have something to snuggle and something to keep themselves warm. Uh, if you want to put water in with them, if they're at that stage, that's fine too, but, but no food. Um, and keep the whole separating area away from the mom so she doesn't come back up and uh, try to say hi. <laughs> So time to swab. So two people is best for swabbing. You can have one person hold the puppy and the other person can handle the swab and do the swabbing. Um, one person can do it. I've done it myself as one person. Again, have a nice blanket on your lap and we'll show you how to do that in the video. Just keep the hot swabs handy so that you can grab them and you don't have to move everything around. Um, Okay, let's see. Oh, okay. So now it's time for the movie. I was just reading a question that was coming in. So um, here's, the, let me go to the next. All right. Um, before uh, we see our stars of the day, I do want to give a shout out to Needs, um, which is a service dog organization up in Princeton, Massachusetts. They're a 501c3 nonprofit organization that was established in 1976 and has trained over 2,000 service dog teams since its founding. NEEDS is an accredited by the Assistance Dogs International, which is the internationally recognized governing body that establishes industry standards and practices. Uh, today, NEEDS offers the widest array of service dog programs in the industry. And while holding true to its core mission of producing service dogs for individuals with disabilities, they are proud of their reputation as a pioneer, leader, and innovator. And since it's National Service Dog Month, month of September, uh, we want to salute NEEDS and all the other service dog organizations that contribute to providing service dogs to those in need. I know we have a couple of breeders with us today from several service dog organizations. So I want to thank you um, and everyone out there for all the good work that you do. All right, let's go to the video. How to swab a whole litter. This is Dancer, the, the, the mom here. She's recently had a litter. Um, this, these puppies are two and a half weeks old. As you can see, they've just nursed. They're all sleeping. And now is a great time to separate the litter. So we're going to start with removing the dam. So Dancer's wondering what's happening. <laughs> and so uh, one of the people up at Needs is coming in here to remove her from the puppies. And as you can see, the puppies, they could care less that mom's left. We took each puppy and placed them in their little beds here with their warming elements, their blankets. And as you can see, they settled pretty quickly right into a really nice sleeping pattern. Um, so we can leave them here for the hour and then we're going to come in and pick each one up. In the meantime, while they're sleeping, uh, we can go set up our litter worksheet. We can take those EM codes you see by the barcode here and put the swab codes on the testing worksheet. You can also put the name of the puppies. Now, at this point, they have collar names, blue collar, red collar, green collar. I would also mark an M or an F next to their name for male or female so we don't get them confused. Uh, there's also a place on the litter worksheet there to um, put other IDs. Some breeders have microchips in their puppies. Um, so they can scan them and put that down as an ID too. So we're gonna show you what's inside each litter kit. So each swab you're gonna get a specific envelope with. Um, it comes with this prepackaged mailer, which she's holding. So don't throw that out. Uh, this is the sterile swab envelope. That's the clear specimen holder after you do your swab. And then there's also some instructions here as well, um, what to do with the swab after you do it. But again, you can see where the EM code is above the barcode. That's the special ID number, specimen, envelope, and instructions. Um, the swab comes in a tube. There's some liquid in there, so make sure you don't spill it when you take it out. So now we've got to the point where we're going to swab our puppy. And you can take it right out of the sterile envelope and pop it right into their cute little cheeks there. Um, and you only need to be in here for 30 seconds to 60 seconds, you know, depending on how much the puppy 
uh, will tolerate it. You can go back and forth on, on either side to get into the pouches there. They're kind of like, hey, this isn't mom, what's going on? So, um, you know, just get it in there, get some saliva. They can make those chewing motions as long as they don't chew on the swab um, to collect enough saliva in there. You can twist it a little bit with your hands as well. You can see with two people, it's easy to manage. Here we have one person doing it, just got the swab handy. And we're going to pick up the puppy and just kind of hold it under your arm. This is blue collar female. And again, she's gonna like open her mouth and we're gonna put it in a little bit. She's a little more fussy. So we do it a little bit on one side and then we're gonna move it over to the other side. So we can gather a little more saliva, there you go. And a little yawn. <laughs> and she's gonna make a little chewing as long as she doesn't chew on the swab, just collect that saliva in her cheek pouch. And then after this, you take the swab, you unscrew it, put the swab into the preservation fluid there, make sure it's tight. And then you shake it back and forth 10 times. And all this is on the instruction card that we sent with the swab. It then goes into the clear specimen envelope. In case it spills out for any reason, it won't get everything wet. Then again, the prepaid mailer, so you don't need postage on it, put that in there, close it up, and it has the barcode, it gets, sw uh, gets scanned when it comes to our Embark lab. Information's already there. And then we've been putting the puppies back with Dancer. There we go. They've all been good job. They're gonna look for a snack right now. <laughs> Anyway, just want to shout out again to Needs for uh, volunteering to help with that video. Um, it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, I'm going to go over now the worksheets and activations because this is also an important part of the swab experience. So keeping track of your puppies and your DNA swabs is really important. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to create a profile for each puppy at the myembark.com slash login. That's how you get into your accounts. You wanna keep track of your swab code. This is the information you're putting on that litter testing worksheet. Again, the dog name, it's gonna be a collar pink, pink girl or pink boy. Uh, make sure they're identified correctly. If you have a microchip number or other ID, put that on the worksheet as well to keep track of things. Again, in the envelope, you're gonna have the sterile swab with the EM code, the specimen bag for shipping, the instruction card, the prepaid swab mailer, which gets sent to the Embark lab. Um, our turnaround time currently is two to four weeks. Okay, so the activation for each swab, um, you can see up here there's in the breeders tool something called activate kits. This is what it looks like. Um, in the lower right hand corner, I circled this example. It shows you it's exactly what it looks like on that sterile envelope. It's the EM code swab number. You're going to put that number up here. It says EM. So just put the number parts in. You don't need the EM part in. And after you put that, you'll click and hit to next. Um, it's going to ask you what dog is for this kit. Um, if, if it's not something that's already in your profile, which won't be with the puppies, you're going to want to add another dog. So you'll click on that. And then you'll go through the process of creating a new profile for each puppy. So we're gonna ask you questions, tell us about your dog, what's its name, what's its call name, what's its registered name, um, what's its sex, again, is very important. Um, make sure it matches the swab that you have, the male swab with the male puppy, and it says male in here. Again, if they don't match, um, then we're gonna have to go in and look at it, which will cause a delay in your results. Um, it'll take you through a couple of more screens of um, if you want to set up a public profile for the puppy to share with potential puppy buyers, you can do that. And then the final screen here, um, it's going to ask you to activate the kit after you've um, added the profile here. I created this tippy toes. It was my, one of my first dogs. <laughs> so I created a profile for him. Activate the kit. And then you are all set. Then you can go and swab the puppies, put it in the mailer, send it to the lab, and everything should run smoothly. Okay, so I'm bringing you back here to this photograph. Um, this is Polo with her litter of 
five puppies. Um, this is a litter I had three years ago. Uh, Polo was her first litter. I used um, frozen semen from 19 years ago, and we had five lovely puppies. So let's look at this predict pair predictors and an actual litter and see what we got. So here we have Polo's COI is 13%. Um, the Sire Kubota's COI is 19%. Uh, the breed average COI is 22%, and this is all things that pair predictor has told me. Uh, with the pair predictor eCOI, the estimated COI of the litter was 28%. Polo's actual litter of COI, uh, the lilac colored collar girl on the far right was 24%. Aqua girl was 24%. Uh, yellow was a male, he was 25%. Uh, blue, is 26% and pink is 29%. So I'm expecting a 28% eCOI and I got 29, 26, 25, 24, and 24. So I think that's a pretty good um, show of a good estimate for me prior to breeding. Okay, so this here is the Embark booth that lives in the Lab Roots platform and you'll have access to this for the next 12 months. And I just want to go over what's in here so you'll know where to go and where to look for things. Um, on the far left, we have Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn if you want to connect with us on social media. Um, on the first kiosk is the puppy DNA testing. Uh, we have how to use litter packages that will link to a article on our website uh, in our blog area. DNA Health Summary is also another um, article that you can click on and learn about that one page resource that you can use to put in the puppy's go home bag. It's great to go like with the DNA Health Summary and with the brochure that comes in your kits because these are two things that um, puppy buyers can look at afterwards when they come home and they want to understand a little bit more about genetics after you've gone over the results with them. Uh, the puppy brochure, there's also a link to that. Uh, responsible breeding practices. This is a link to our Canine Health Summit from 2022, which uh, featured Dr. Dockweiler uh, talking about responsible breeding practices. So I've put that in there as a good resource for you. On the other side, resources kiosk, um, there is the litter testing worksheet. So you can download that PDF um, of what you saw in the video and use that for your own litters. If you're curious about uh, what health conditions your breed might have, if you're new to DNA testing, we have a very robust um, search health test directory on our website. You can search either by breed of dog and it will list all the breed specific conditions, or you can search by the condition and find out what breeds of dogs um, it's breed specific for on that. Uh, the education and insights, that clicks to our resource and insights section, which is all our blog posts, all our articles, all our videos. Right now, I have it pinned to the pair predictor article, so you can learn more about pair predictor by clicking on that. And then genetic COI is for those who are really interested in the science behind it. Um, this too is a video from our 2022 Canine Health Summit. Um, so those of you who want to nerd out on COI, that's, that's where you go for that. Hey, well, that's all I have for today. Um, we're going to go over to some questions right now. Let me go over there. We'll look at some questions. Okay, so here, oh, and there's one thing also I wanted to just mention up close. I know there was a question in the previous session about matchmaker versus pair predictor. Um, and Pair predictor are for those dogs who are just in your breeding program. So just on your dashboard in your um, account. But this question here, how can I use pair predictor if I don't own a stud using studs outside my program? Um, well, you can do one of two things. You can ask the owner if they have been Embark tested. And if they have, um, we have a help article again called, how do I share my dog's um, you know, profile with that to do that? Um, or she could um, DNA test her dog um, with an Embark swab, and then that would be in our database, and then we could connect the two for pair predictor to work. This next question, will pair predictor be available to match your bitch with a male that is not registered in your name, but his results are shared with you? Yes, that's what I was just talking about with the other one. You do have to make sure that his results 
are shared with you. Let me just double check that to make sure because I will say, yes, that, that is correct. But I will follow up with you uh, in an email just to double check that. So it's not registered in your name. If the, if the owner has been embark tested and wants to have you have access to his results, then you can share, you can ask that person to share their results with you. And again, go to the help center. How do I share my dog's results? And that will work for you. You can also just reach out to our customer experience department, which is readers at embarkvet.com to help you with that. Just reading this question here. Hey, um, she's asking about, um, it's nice to see the list of results in pair predictor in my breed. It is not common to use the own dogs for breeding. Um, it would be great to add this also to matchmaker, what I have to use for dogs from others. So, um, I guess what she's saying is, are we going to add to pair predictor what matchmaker does currently? Uh, currently, they are two separate tools in the Embark universe. But if you uh, are interested in having a dog added for pair predictor, I would you know, reach out to the owner and see if you can have those results shared so that works. I'm looking at this other question. Um, it's about a website. I'm going to think it was the help website. You were asking about a .com. So the help website is help.embarkvet.com uh, to reach out for the help articles. And you can go into how do I share my dog's results or you can just, um, or shared owners, I'm sorry, not results, shared owners. And then you can also go to Google and just type in Embark shared owners and that same article will pop up. Okay, here's a question. How much does it cost per puppy to test the litter? Uh, well, you're in luck right now because for the first time ever, we are having a sale, a discount on the litter packages. Um, right now you can save up to $14 um, on the small litter packages and up to $22 on the large litter package. So uh, the large litter package um, before our discount is $109 per swab. Yes. So here's a question. When I share the puppy's test results with the new puppy owner, will I still have the test results and info in my account? Yes. You're just going to be testing. You're just going to be sharing um, like a PDF of the full report with the puppy owner via email. So everything stays in your account for those puppy owners. Um, it's if you want to sh you know, share them as an owner, then you can do that as, as well. Um, okay. Here's a phone number for a specialist. I do have that phone number from earlier. I did have that phone number from earlier. I'll have to go look for that phone number. It's under too many pieces of paper. Um, all right, hang on one second. Okay, here's some other questions here. Um, okay, so here's a question which is interesting about one of the functionalities of the breeder dashboard. Um, she did not put all her documents um, in, in her dashboard and she's not sure about having all that information live and she would love to hear how I think about this. So. I use it. It's a great tool. When you share your public profile with puppy buyers, they can see the registration papers, uh, any certificates of health testing that you've done. If you have OFA certificates or um, other, you know, eyes or heart or other things that are non-genetic that you can add into your dog's profile besides the genetic results. Um, you can also put photographs in there of, of the puppies, of the sire, of the dam, of pedigrees. You can put those in there as well. So I love it because it's a great repository for a lot of information that, uh, you know, we used to make a lot of paper copies of and put in a folder <laughs> um, or you make a PDF and send it in an email. Now you can just share one link with that profile and all of that will be there.
Okay, here's a question about parentage testing. Um, we do not do parentage testing per se right now um, as part of the regular swab kit, but if you have an instance where you need a parentage test done, you can reach out to our customer experience team and we can assist with that, which would be breeders at embarkvet.com. Uh, here's another one. I, I talked about this earlier, but how can I switch to a breeder account from a breed and health account? Again, customer service can help you out with this, which is in, in, uh, breeders at embarkvet.com. So here's a question. What if you have a breed that has one to three puppies in a litter? Is it best to just do individual testing rather than ordering the puppy package? So I would go ahead and order the puppy package. If you only have one or two puppies in that litter, you still have two swabs for your next litter. So I would go ahead and order that puppy package. What is this? Oh, here's another one. What is the uh, shelf life on testing kits? Uh, the shelf life is two years on the kits. And I got another question here about adding another dog to my account for pair predictor. So how do I share my dog with another breeder? Again, you can go to help.embarkvet.com and type in shared owner in the search box and that will bring it up. Or you can just do Google Embark shared owner and that article will pop up as well. Okay, well, it looks like we're through all of the questions. So um, thank you all very much for attending this session. Um, we have a little bit of a break, which is great, which means we can all go grab some lunch. And our final um, session coming up next is going to be on um, uh, marketing healthy puppies. Uh, we're going to be going from market, puppy marketplaces to do it yourself, featuring uh, Nicole Engelman and Heather Gibson, and that's going to start at 2 p.m. So um, please join us then. Thanks. See you soon.